My mic is right there. You can't see it, but I'm, I've got this like gray fuzzy thing staring at me. Uh, what are you looking at? What's up guys? Tim with Kitchen and Craft here. And today we're going to talk condiments, more specifically tomato ketchup. I mean, you're probably thinking like, why do I want to make homemade ketchup when I can just go to the store and get some Heinz? And I'll be honest, there's some truth to that for sure. But homemade ketchups have some characteristics that store-bought ketchups just don't have. They have more of a savory note to them and they're more tomatoey for sure. Homemade ketchups are just more robust in flavor. And I should let you in on a little secret. This video is a lead up to next week's video where we're gonna be making tater tots. You can't have fries, or in this case, tater tots, without ketchup. Am I right? Really? I mean, come on, agree with me here. Don't tell me you're a mayo person. I can't stand mayo on fries. All right, enough with the intro, let's get to the video. Today, we're gonna make some tasty homemade tomato ketchup. The first step is to add some extra virgin olive oil to a sauce pot. Then we're gonna slice some yellow onion and mince some garlic. Once those are cut, we're gonna add them to the sauce pot, then place it over a medium flame. Sweat the vegetables for about five minutes. The goal here is to get the garlic a little bit brown and the onions tender. We're just trying to pull out some additional flavor from these two items before we add the rest of our ingredients to the pot. Give the pot an occasional stir so things don't burn. Then when the garlic's golden brown in color, add your dry spices. Continue cooking everything over medium heat for a few more minutes and then add your tomato paste. Keep cooking for a few more minutes until the tomato paste takes on a rusty color. Now it's time to add the San Marzano tomatoes. Now you could add all of this stuff to a pot at the same time and you'd be off to the races, but we're building flavor by adding and cooking each of these ingredients individually. Speaking of which, it's time to add your dark brown sugar. Let things simmer for a few minutes, then go in with some Worcestershire sauce. Shortly after, you can add your cider vinegar, then give the pot a quick stir. Then wait for it, wait for it. Season with some kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. Cover the pot slightly and simmer for an hour and a half. All right, guys, we're near the finish line. It's time to break out the blender, the food processor, the stick blender, anything that you can use to puree this ketchup. Well, it's time to break it out and set it up. Just a quick heads up that your ketchup may change color slightly, and that's just the blender bringing air into the sauce. Your ketchup will darken a little bit as it rests. This recipe yields about two and a half cups of ketchup. I use a glass quart jar for storage, but of course you can use whatever you'd like. Just remember to let the ketchup cool completely before placing a lid on it and storing it in your refrigerator. <laughs> 